I'm going to very, very gently fold the rubber dam um, uh, in, in on itself so the patient can still uh, breathe. And I'm just gonna check to see where the rubber dam clamp is. I'm gonna get the patient to open really, really nice and wide and not to close until I say so. So hello, welcome to uh, this week's Friday clinical case. Uh, this is a, a clinical case which is going to go straight back to basics, okay? So this is probably my most comprehensive explanation of how I do a root canal. And of course, I've chosen a really, really simple root canal to do in this case, which is an upper left two. Um, and it's just going to try and demonstrate to you every single step um, that I do to carry out a single rooted uh, root canal. It also includes um, an explanation, a brief explanation on how to do periapical radiography uh, during root canal, which I think is probably my most um, requested uh, thing to do uh, with this channel and I'm definitely definitely working on something to show people how to take radiographs uh, during root canal but um, rest assured it is a very very difficult um, uh, video to make but I am trying to make it best I can so but before we get into the case um, what always kind of shocks me about the, the, the channel itself is that when I look at the analytics of each video that's posted every Friday, is that over 56% of uh, 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 people who watch these videos are not subscribers. So what I'm gonna ask you to do is a really simple and free way to support the channel. If you like these videos, is please just hit that subscribe button. Um, I'd be much, much appreciated. If you do hit the subscribe button, I'll promise you that I will continue these videos and I will continue to make these videos more detailed and more educational. Let's talk about the case. So this is a really, really, really simple case of an upper left two. Um, as you can see here by the radiograph, we can see that the tooth itself is completely untouched, it's unrestored, and uh, the patient, I believe, had suffered some kind of trauma to this tooth. She'd lost uh, an upper left three in the past, and an implant was placed, and um, you know, it just transpires that the upper left two had become necrotic and needed root canal treatment. So the very, very first thing we want to do is place uh, the rubber dam. Again, I've mentioned this before, no rubber dam, no root canal, and there's absolutely no uh, you know, ifs, no buts on that one. You 100% need rubber dam for root canal, mainly for safety and also for cross-infection. And... Um, you know, when we are accessing the tooth, we want to think about the orientation of our burr. It'd be really, really easy for you to sort of drill into the tooth and go out buckly. So you want to make sure you know where the, 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 the burr is going. And we've drilled in here and then possibly I can see there's some sort of exposure. So I'm going to use a, a DG endodontic probe here just to have a sort of a bit of a feel around and it, and it, and it, and it, it finds that it isn't an exposure. So what I do like to do is I like to use uh, an ultrasonic tip to try and use uh, some of the energy from that just to break through into the pulp chamber. And again, when we have a little fiddle around, have a little look around, um, the patient had noticed that she was getting a little bit of leakage from the dam, especially when we started to use the hypochlorite. So I'm going to use this Light Cure Liquid Dam. This is uh, much better than a corking agent, I feel like, because it's less messy. It's it sets um, and you know I, I feel like you've got a bit more control over it so this is a, a specific liquid dam that sets under ultraviolet light and once we've put the liquid dam on you can see here that the uh, canal space is exposed and you'll also notice my access cavity does encroach on the incisal edge and that's because I've got straight line access it is a little bit of a way up between do you uh, do you uh, destroy the, uh, the the sort of incisal edge of a, of a tooth, which is what you don't want to do, and get in straight line access? So in this case, um, I, uh, I I was I it was a fine balance essentially. Once I've confirmed that the uh, canal space is open, I'm going to just use a, a size 10K file 
just to, with it with it with a sort of a, a very very acute bend on it just to get into the orifice and once we've reached into the orifice we're going to use a kind of watch winding motion to open up this uh, coronal orifice and then i'm going to use my size high flex 1503 file again this is just to open up the orifice a bit more i feel like the coronal orifice is just not not that um, uh, open enough for me to get a accurate working length. Of course, if the coronal orifice isn't open and then you get any working length and then you open up the orifice, that will affect the uh, the, the the working length because you would you essentially you're shortening the, uh, the the length from where the file can get into the the apical end and then straight away we're ready to do our working length measurements here i am using a size 15k file because arguably this is the most accurate file you can use um to 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 gain a, a correct working length and then i'm just using this very very gentle watch wind motion um down to zero and again as you notice with a lot of my videos what i like to do is i like to just very very gently push the file past the the apex not too far just a tiny little bit past and then i like to back it up and um, as i back it up and it reaches zero that is my correct zero reading um, I feel like if you just go straight for the first zero reading that you get, that's probably not as accurate as, as, as pushing it through the apex. And when we pull this size 15K file out and we measure it, we can see that the zero reading is 23 millimeters. So that is our zero reading and we're ready to shape with our high flex glide path file to this zero reading at 23 millimeters. And it's just super, super simple. You know, if it's feel, if you feel like this isn't reaching down to zero quickly and easily, don't push it. You just want to pull it out and recapitulate. But in this case, it just reaches the length really, really nice and easy. And again, lots of irrigation. And um, and it, it is important to recapitulate. And what I mean by that is you get your size 15 ham file to the zero reading, making sure that the canal space is patent and open. And then we're gonna do a bit more shaping with the size 1503. I feel like maybe it was getting a little bit stuck, a bit more irrigation. And then we're ready to use our final shaping. We're gonna use a master apical file. We're gonna use a size 25 variable high flex. And in this case, we are gonna shape the canal uh, 0.5 millimeters away from the zero reading and this is to account for the, uh, the the apex and again we're getting a bit of resistance from this file so again I don't want to push this too far we're going to irrigate we're going to recapitulate and then we're going to uh, we're going to use the size 25 again just to try and get to the zero reading some people might argue that going from a 15 to a 25 is too much of a step up but I just feel like in cases like this, I've had predictable results and I'm happy to, to move up. Sometimes if uh, the canal is highly sclerosed, I'll probably go from a, a 15 to a 20, then to the 25. And again, you can see here that I'm just doing lots and lots of recapitulation, making sure that, uh, that, that that canal space is nicely clean, lots and lots of irrigation. And then we're ready for our comb fit radiograph. I've got this style Italiano disinfecting ring here. And my nurse is just going to put the GP point in the uh, dry area. And again, this is uh, acts as like a focus point. I know where the GPs are going to go. I'm going to measure the GP point. Um, um, to 0.5 millimeters away from the zero reading. So in this case, it's going to be 22.5 uh, millimeters. I would like to pull it out and just check that we've got the right length there. And then when we place the GP to length, we're going to just very, very sort of gently push the GP in. We're not going to ram it home. And then we're going to just feel for that tug back. We're going to, going to fit the GP cone to the working length and then just pull it out and just feel for that tip of that GP point is engaging with the apical end. We're going to snip the excess off and then we're ready for our comfort radiograph. And you can see here that there are two types of uh, uh, radiographic um, holders here. Um, you know, you've got your sort of uh, normal bog standard PAs and then we've got your endodontic PAs. I personally like to use the uh, just the normal PAs um, with uh, with anterior teeth. I think um, if you use the radiographic ones, they're just too bulky for the patient and you're not going to get that kind of proper um, sort of periapical axis on the uh, on the x-ray tube so if you can help it obviously if you've got a hand file in place and you need that relief from the uh, endodontic 
um, uh, X-ray holder, then obviously you're going to use the uh, the endodontic uh, style holder. But in this case, I am using uh, just the normal holder. And then obviously I've snipped off the GP cone uh, right at the end. So when I have sort of fold over the uh, the 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 rubber dam i'm not going to get it uh, sort of pulled out and i'm going to remove uh, the frame i'm going to place the uh, the x-ray into the holder and i always put the dot to the top because this is a area of orientation that the patient that the nurse can use to orientate the the the, the x-ray when she puts it on the computer i'm going to very very gently fold the rubber dam um, uh, in, in on itself so the patient can still uh, breathe. And I'm just going to check to see where the rubber dam clamp is. I'm going to get the patient to open really, really nice and wide and not to close until I say so. I obviously place the holder in place and then I get the patient to very, very gently push down and I'm not going to get the patient to bite down too hard. And then we take the x-ray and we can see here that the, 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 the cone fit radiograph looks really, really, really nice. So we are to length. We've got that kind of nice sweeping effect that we get with the GP point. So we know we've kind of, um, uh, you know, when we've been shaping, we have uh, conformed to the anatomy of the tooth. And then we're ready for our final irrigation protocol. I'm going to use this again, this disinfecting ring to uh, use uh, the sodium hypochlorite to fill a well with that. And then we're going to use EDTA to fill another well with that. And then I'm going to set up my ultrasonic unit. I like to use these tiny little ultrasonic tips to activate the irrigant that I'm going to use. I like to use these very, very fine irrigation tips. And I also like to use this particular irrigation unit on its highest setting. So we're going to remove the GP point after we've obviously taken the cone fit radiograph. We're going to place this into our disinfector. We're going to make sure that that is disinfected. That's very, very important. And then our first step is to use sodium hypochlorite. In this case, I use 2%, but other people like to use higher. We use the sodium hypochlorite and we activate it until it runs clear. We're then going to use our second irrigation step. This is going to be 17% uh, EDTA. And again, we're going to irrigate with that. We're going to activate it until it runs clear. And then our final irrigation step is sodium hypochlorite. And one thing I did forget to do was to... Uh, uh, disinfect uh, the file I'm going to use for the obturation. And again, our final uh, irrigation step is sodium hypochlorite activated and irrigated until it runs clear. And then we're ready to use our paper points. Again, I'm not too worried about the apex on this tooth, so I'm happy just to place the, uh, the paper points and fit them to length. I'm going to push the uh, paper points in until we notice that the end is, is nice and dry. And um, in this case, it only takes uh, just a couple of paper points to make it nice and dry. We're then ready for obturation. I'm going to pick up the GP cone. I'm going to dry it off, although some people have mentioned that maybe isopropyl alcohol is best for this. And then I'm going to get that ready, put it to one side, and I'm going to use uh, the one fill with this visco tip just to uh, place uh, into the canal space. And I'm going to use this disinfected uh, file um, at 22 or 22.5 millimeters just to introduce the uh, biceramic sealer all the way to the end of uh, the canal. Um, and obviously this gets rid of any risk of uh, uh, vape, uh, vapor lock. And then I'm going to just very, very gently push uh, the GP cone to length. You notice there's a tiny little droplet on there. So you have to be super mindful of, um, you know, using, uh, making sure that the GP cone is, is nice and dry. But in this case, I'm happy because it's sort of in the coronal third. And I'm just going to very, very, very gently push this uh, GP cone to length until we've got to the point where it's been snipped off and we know that it's at the correct working length and then we're ready to cut the excess off we're going to use some heated pluggers here and use a, a bnl unit i like to use in this uh, case i'm going to use a very thin tipped heated plugger and um really it's 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 a significant difficulty here to remove the excess gp without pulling the whole uh, gp cone out especially when the uh, the access cavity is very, very, very narrow. So if you're doing this on a molar, it can be quite easy. But in this case, it's just a little bit fiddly. And essentially what you want to do is you want to make sure uh, the GP cone is cut 
um, at the correct length. And what I mean by this is that the GP cone needs to be, or the GP obturation needs to be below the CJ. If you get a GP in the sort of crown of the tooth over a long period of time, the crown can um, can can discolor. And um, sometimes it can be quite difficult to know how deep you are um, with the obturation and how far down it is. And, um, you know, um, a, a really, really good way of um, working this out is if you get your Mac 2 plugger and you get like a little tiny stopper on this and you measure the stopper where the CEJ is on the exterior of the tooth and then you place the same uh, uh, sort of Mac 2 plugger in place, you can see that we are a little bit way off. So what we want to do is we want to just very, very sort of gently um, pick out little tiny sort of pieces of GP um, and condense it down. And, and, and you want to do that really, really gently because you don't want to push the, the GP cone out. And then as you can see here, we're just going to measure the, uh, the extent and you can see that now the, the sort of top of the GP is cut to the right length. And I always like to take a, uh, a post-op radiograph uh, before I fill it uh, completely. And this is um, just a habit of mine from when I was less experienced. Um, and I've spoken to quite a few endodontists and they also like to do that. Um, the, 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 the amount of times where I have taken the x-ray and everything's been fine is like 100 times uh, is like 99 times out of 100. And that kind of one time where either there is an extrusion of the GP or there is a massive void, if you've got a filling in place, it can be difficult to sort of manage that really, really quickly. So in this case, I have obturated the tooth, but I haven't filled it completely. And what I am going to do, I'm going to take another post-op radiograph. And again, it's the same sort of thing. I'm just going to fold the uh, rubber dam over again and make sure the patient can, can breathe. We're gonna just sort of push the rubber dam back so I can see the clamp. I'm gonna get the patient to open really, really nice and wide. I'm gonna get this uh, X-ray film holder into place and then get the patient just to bite down nice and gently. And um, we're gonna take the X-ray. And when we look at the X-ray, it's relatively nice. I suppose if I've got my super, super, super um, critical hat on, we have got extrusion of the sealer, but we are using a bioceramic and I am not um, overly concerned about that and the patient's been consented about uh, the risk of that but overall because of the bioceramic it usually resorbs or it usually doesn't cause any bother and then we're finally ready to fill uh, the tooth because we're using a bioceramic we can remove the excess with just water so here i'm using an ultrasonic tip but of course the the uh, the cavity is quite deep so obviously the water is pooled in uh, the base of the cavity so i'm going to use a paper point just to wick out the excess moisture. And then because um, the cavity is quite deep, what we're gonna use is we're gonna use a light cured GIC um, in just in the first instance. And what this does is it, um, it, it, it makes it easier for us to place the composite at a later day because obviously when you're using the bond, as you can see here, it, it can pull quite significantly um, at the base of the cavity. So again, in this case, we try and sort of blow the bond out, but it's still uh, got some excess there. So we've just got to use a paper point just to remove the excess. And then once we have uh, bonded the tooth, we're using a self, uh, self etch bond. We're going to just use this STR bulk fill composite just to fill up uh, the canal space. And then um, sometimes with these um, deep cavities, I just like to use a, a really thin probe just to make sure there's no air bubbles in there. And then obviously light cure. And uh, overall, you know, I'm relatively happy with this tooth. Um, the patient was, was, was really, really nervous in this case, but she did really, really, really well. And as ever like to say you know and i mentioned before if you have any questions any criticisms if you think you would have done something differently please comment in the section below we've also got a membership program the membership program uh, supports the channel keeps me independent but also you get early access to content i run about two weeks ahead with all the videos so you get early access to all those videos and thanks for watching and have a lovely day, and I'll see you next Friday. Bye-bye.